Okay, so I'm looking at um, trigger functions at the moment. Um, my notes from yesterday. Uh, next up, I want to be looking at uh, triggers part two. And we'll see where this goes to. I did notice that I've just pressed the mix button. Um, let's have a see. Um, got this track at the moment. Just having a look at one of the inbuilt tracks, which is Future Man. Um, and it has this voice. So the reason that nothing else is playing when I press that is on the track enable mute, I've got everything muted apart from 14, uh, track 14. And uh, the reason for that is I, w uh, I was just playing the whole track. Uh, let's just put everything enabled. Um, just listening to it, see what it sounded like. And I thought, I like that slowly building pad sound. Which one is it? So by process of elimination, went through and took all the drums off, etc. Um, and got to about there, I think. Yeah. Got that rid of. There's the bass. And there's that pad. Brilliant. Um, and that's great, because I thought, what can I do with that sound? Um, could I put that as a drone in the background and play something over the top? Um, and I just happened to come across in the manual a, a section when it explained on how to change the function of the triggers. So I thought I'd show you that quickly, because it's a shortcut. Um, and you can do that whilst you're playing. Uh, or have a track playing, etc. Um, so we're going to control this here. Trigger button function plays note events. As long as your command station is updated to version 2 of the software, uh, Ray Bellis has a fantastic uh, website for that. Uh, if I remember, I'll put it in the description. Uh, if not, I think it's emutools. something. Um, but if you I'll try and remember to do that. Um, this is one of the new features in the Command Station version 2 um, a firmware update. Uh, and it uses the tap tempo button as a shift key. And if you press that and hold it and then take this over here onto triggers and press it, you see these three lights here? The first one, second one, third one then it repeats back to the first one again that changes up here whether you play note events beat parts or select patterns note events so I want to just see if I can start a drone using the triggers select it so it's going on in the background and then change function to beats parts and uh, select patterns to, to play that um, and see what happens can I use it across um, the tracks and stuff while it's playing? So I'll leave it on select patterns now. Uh, so there's, that's the shortcut, basically tap. And uh, once triggers is selected, you don't have to have controllers selected here. You just tap there and it goes to the first one, to the second, to the third one. So to the first one, and it holds that note. Um, if you go to controllers, it's going to play note events. If you go to play note events, it's clicking latch on F4 note on channel 9. So if I wanted it to do this sound, which is what I want it to do basically, um, I'll change that channel 9 to 14, and then... Yeah. Um, and I'll also do a lower note in the register. 
Yeah, so I'll have it put in on C2. Note. Brilliant. Um, get back up to the top there. And if I change the function now of the trigger, uh, beats parts, select patterns. Yeah. So then when I scroll through, it doesn't go to trigger note select. Does it does this and goes to trigger pattern select five unit. So I need to change that to um, the one I was thinking of, uh, which is the one from I was doing yesterday, this body groove. So that's now done. Uh, by the way, uh, the trigger button setting, the all 16 of them, they get saved to the multi setup. So if I go to global and save the multi setup, you can store those 16 into the multi setup. Uh, and that means that if you want to have a performance, save the state of the synth in a multi setup, it'll save your trigger button elements, 16 of them. Uh, but if you want those functions again, you have to reload the multi setup. And if you don't save them to the multi setup, the next time you load up the command station, um, you may lose them if it's not that multi setup that loads up. Just like with a, a voice. If you alter the voice, then you need to save that voice to get to it the next time. Anyway. Um, right, so now, um, if that's, if I just double check what I've done there again. So I've got select patterns. Okay, so uh, when I go to it this time, press play and press on the first trigger, it should then change the pattern. Let's have a see. Ah! Sorry, uh, I just forgot. I muted the um, the track so it wasn't playing anything. Uh, so I've unmuted those um, particular tracks and I'll play onto the next track now. Triggers. Next pattern. Once this pattern has changed, it'll go to it. Something else I'll show you, another shortcut that's in, in the version 2 software, firmware update is you can skip to the beginning of a pattern by holding play and pressing stop whilst it's playing. Let me show you. To hold play, press stop. What's that number? Yeah. So what you can do with that is, for example, on the previous one, if, if you just have a different track playing and then use your trigger to change, you don't have to wait till the end of the full sequence. In other words, this second track here is eight bars. And if I let it play to four, and on four, uh, after I've selected the um, changing of the pattern, on four, I'll change it to start again and it'll load the next one. It's easier to see it rather than explain it for me. So let's start it and do that. So I'm going to press play, choose the next um, pattern to play, and then start that pattern almost straight away. Yeah. So that's just a handy little feature, especially if you've got a longer uh, pattern and you know where you want to change it or you want to switch things up and switch backwards and forwards between pattern, get your timings right. Uh, so that was a handy thing I just found out by looking into the triggers, so I thought I'd share that with you. Um, so going back to the uh, thing I was trying to do, um, which was, was it that one? No, what was the one I was playing on? <laughs> um, oh, was it? Was it zero? You next? No. 
<laughs> I forgot it. Um, was it that one? Let's go to uh, track enable disable. That's not that one, definitely, is it? Anyway, if I can't find it, I can't find it. Maybe it was that one. No, it was not. Never mind. This is what happens sometimes. My, my brain tends to not follow um, my instructions to recall. <laughs> so it just... Yeah. Uh, right, so... Uh, go to preset now. And... Uh, I'll sort of go back to pattern. No, I'll go to pattern. Choose another pattern. Uh, need to be on triggers. That's body groove and that's burv. Body groove. Oh, not body groove. Preset 14. Sounds like. I don't think it's that one. That'll do. Uh, we can have a, a play with that sound. Um, now, if I go into. I can either use the controls menu or use the shortcut and go to note events and let's see yeah so that then they'll play that so I'll leave that playing whilst I play the track and because it's quite a noisy track in that sense what I'll do I think is shut down a lot of the noises uh, just so I've got that sound and maybe the, the kick let's have a try So we've got that going. Uh, go to triggers. Right, so with that being on, interesting behaviour. I wonder if that's to do with it being monophonic again. I don't know if you remember yesterday, I had a look at that. So let's go into preset. And I'll just have a look for solo glide here. So that's finger glide. So change to all layers editing. Turn that off. And then we should have... Yeah. So we can play all of those at once. Lovely. And now let's see what happens when we do the pattern again. So that then does what I expect it to. Yeah, so now I'm going to change the state. And again. And then I'll change... Does that work for changing pattern? Am I on a changing pattern? Select pattern. Ah, it's the same. So I need to change that, obviously. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just changed to the same pattern. Uh, right, so what I did there was I pressed the button. It was in the right mode, but it was changing to 3 1, which it still is now. So if I do this now, it's getting ready to change. It's 8 bars long, so we can just. Now it sounds like it still held it. Interesting. Because that means if I now change pattern Yeah. I wonder. I'm just because that's going on. That's from the the previous patterns, yeah. So let's let's have that, yeah, to change pattern again. See if the same sound continues at the end. Right. That's what I was hoping it would do. Let's just 
cancelled that. That there, the shortcut there is enter a MIDI, stops any MIDI transmitted sync signals, whether it's transmitting them internally, externally, or both. So therefore, we can have a sound that we start on one track and hold it and leave it there while we go to other tracks and it's still at the background. And the reason I'm interested in doing that is because I can then change patterns, keeping and holding at least one sound as a drone in the background to complement the the patterns. Um, so if I look at the... See, that now um, is, is a kit sound. Whereas on the other um, pattern, it wasn't a kit sound, it was this sound. That's something interesting that the command station will do. It'll hold a sound over whilst you change stuff. It even does it on like, if I do it now, and then change to this. Yeah. The reason it changed there, I would think, which we'll just explore now, is because it this is a monophonic sound, so it'll cut off the previous MIDI signal to continue playing. So we can try that. Uh, yeah, so that's finger glide, so that's why I would think it did it. Uh, let's see if we can find one that... Let's see if we can find one that's not that. Maybe... Yeah, so that's um okay, so what we'll do is go back to pattern, play that. Yeah. That's the right one, isn't it? 14. No, I've just changed. Just changed it onto changed it to that. back to three there we go so I'll hold that now which you can do with a sustain pedal or with this uh, function in triggers change that to another <coughs> keep it on the same one and just change the voice how about that uh, we'll just take out a load of the other stuff so it's not lots and lots of stuff going on just have the maybe just have the bass this time. Right, so that's going on. So if we go to presets now and change presets. It still carries on. Yeah. And as long as I don't change to a preset that's <laughs> So I've got those two held now. So just testing that, what's happening is holding a key moves as you change the preset, you can leave it holding the previous note and previous preset voice whilst you change the preset voice here. So what that means is the latch functionality on the triggers um, oh, I'm not on that one <laughs> uh, change the functionality back to this one there so it needs to be that first one then so that happens yeah Let's just get it. So that's selecting, is that selecting a pattern? Let's have a look. Triggers playing notes. Oh, interesting. Why is it, is the arpeggiator on? That's why, okay. So there we go. If, if the arp's on, rather than being set to preset, if it's on, then yeah, it'll do that. So if I take that off, okay, 
There we go. Right, okay. So you've got it latched on. Change the preset and and then I've got it uh, holding that, which is not a sustain your voice. So that's anyway. That that was the thing. It's taken me twenty minutes to get to that point. Um, that that trigger function for me is really sort of handy and useful. Um, so that's part one, shall we say? Uh, just to show you that, show the the shortcut of uh, the tap and the track enable, and how to restart the. by using that uh, holding play and pressing stop as a shortcut to restart the uh, the pattern at the beginning. And in that way, then you can add up your patterns uh, in the line or select them real time. The other thing you might want to do is the tempo um, you go to the MIDI menu, I think, bass tempo, yeah, so zero will be the MIDI click if you were putting a MIDI tempo click in, or it's got a current tempo, usually based on the preset, uh, but you can here keep a constant tempo, so if you've got a, a tempo here uh, for a pattern, that's at 135, so change to the next pattern while it's playing stays at 135 so if you alter that behavior change to the new tempo what happens is if we go back to that one 135 when you change to the new one it'll drop down to 130 so we can make that more apparent by editing that and dropping it down to say 53 uh, pressing play change to that next pattern not wait by pressing our shortcut And it jumps to the new tempo. So you can decide whether you want your uh, patterns to work at the same rate as the first pattern sets it at, or as you set it at here. That's a constant tempo, or to change, to drop it down a bit, speed it up a bit, whatever. So I usually keep it on, keep constant. I think it's a default. So yeah, that was another little tip um chain patterns um which uh, sort of ties in with the triggers mode because if you have triggers mode um on um pattern select then obviously you can choose your patterns knowing that you'll have the same tempo running throughout the song now uh that's all well and good and fine um, so I think I'll leave it there because the next bit I want to do now if I have the ability in a sec is to just explore a bit of preset sound um, generation uh, see where we can go with that knowing that that whole thing works now I can see you can do a longer change in sound to go its way through the track behind the track or other tracks so thanks for watching so far um, 
that's there. Thank you. Uh, and we'll uh, see what happens next time.